The big talent revamp. Will it actually succeed to revitalize the game's class customization, balance, and borrowed power problem? Or is it just a colossal waste of effort, one destined to make players feel stupid and be a nightmare hanging over World of Warcraft's head for the next few years? Well, if you asked us and a bunch of others three months ago, we might have actually said the latter. The first few iterations of Talent Trees, uh, they look cool, but some of them really suck beyond belief. But during beta, the team did clearly find a design philosophy that, uh, well, may work for players across the entire spectrum. But it's not all sunshine and roses. How do you make a total of 38 spec trees and 13 class trees, ensuring that every single one of them is balanced? That they've got the same underlying philosophy of choice, and all while feeling distinct? Yeah, the answer is you don't. However, there may also be a bit of a secret agenda behind these talent trees that may sound outright conspiratorial, but can kind of break a computer. Unlike today's sponsor, you we were just good. Us! It's, it, it, it's us. Uh, look, our patrons are a massive part of making this all possible. And here is this month's loot. And there's also a special, so you get even more. It's a hell of a lot, and it's all from our game development team. But uh, hey, there's more. We've also got the Lore Walking Podcast, where you will find hours of in-depth lore content. Uh, early access, of course, to upcoming videos, a few of which are, are there now. And uh, it is the best way to help us out and you get cool stuff in return. So, patrons, thank you, and if you would like to join up, then you can click that link below. As soon as the talent trees were announced, everyone started saying the same things. They're just going to repeat the mistakes of the past. Cookie cutter builds, a preset for raids, a preset for tyrannical, a preset for fortified. Most players are just going to pick the talents that the Sims tell them to pick. Blizzard couldn't balance their way out of a paper bag, so it's always going to be the same, just with a coat of new paint. And that is honestly pretty damn understandable. But let's be real. What everyone has expected has already happened. A plenty of class discords have obviously simmed or theorycrafted the talents for each spec, trying to figure out uh, what is going to be the most raw damage. And truthfully, when we started digging, I mean, we as a team and I as a person had the all the, the same conclusion that nothing would really change. That's what we thought. We thought maybe we'd get some cool new stuff, but it would be at the cost of being a bit more annoying or something. Now, one of the first things that we noticed was that none of the Boomkin builds listed on the Dream Grove Discord server have Solar Beam, which is their interrupt. And the guy just says, if you need some utility BS, obviously please swap into it. Ah, off to a great start then. Cookie cutter builds that don't have utility. Oh boy, we're in for fun. But in looking into what each of the class discords forums are recommending, we actually found something that was pretty interesting and something we didn't really expect. Blizzard's efforts to make compelling talent trees in many cases have actually worked. Let's look at the current Brewmaster recommendations just for an example. There's actually so much choice that instead of linking a build or even a few, they've pinned this. It's an annotated version of the tree where gold means always take, green means uh, good choice, but your mileage may vary on uh, damage or mitigation. Purple means maybe needed for certain fights and gray means avoid. To be fair though, that's a tank, and tanks have traditionally had uh, a bit more choice between damage and survivability. For DPS then, surely the only real metric is DPS. So it's all down to whatever the Sims uh, say. Obviously yes, but even the Windwalker channel has the same thing going on. They actually link to a base build with 8 points to spare that can be used accordingly. There's enough choice that they just can't tell you what's best in all situations. And to list each one would just be too much work. So their pin says, please use your own brain to build further. <laughs> and they've even got this image uh, pinned in from earlier in testing. Healers, largely, have the same thing going on. The Mistweaver channel has a uh, list of pre-patch builds posted from different community members. And while the core is the same, mostly, there are still plenty of differences across the class and the spec trees, depending on how they play and what they value more. 
over with holy paladins, they recommend three builds. One for caster, one for melee, and one sort of all-purpose dungeon build. But it's not just, hey, this is the build. There's a small paragraph after each that explains what small things could be swapped out based on personal preference. The Shaman Discord then took a different approach. Here, we've got three builds, but it also notes that player ability and raid situation are going to contribute much more because talents are close in value. So that's interesting. Overall, with Shaman DPS specs and uh, say Sub and Outlaw Rogues, there are at least multiple builds that are outlined uh, that are called samples. But they're just samples, meaning there is room to experiment based on situation, gear, and of course desired playstyle. Then looking at the Death Knights, Warriors, Hunters, Mages, uh, Sub Rogues, and Havoc uh, DHs, the possibility does seem a bit smaller. Here we do see the usual, here's your single target, here's your AoE build, but they do come with a healthy dose of things you might change, or, you know, you have a few options here, which is good to see. Now, Warlocks are seemingly too unorganized and complicated to put together builds in the same place, but at least they're actively having fun discussing their testing from what we could read, and crucially, they've not decided on anything yet. Meanwhile, Red Paladins and Shadow Priests, um... Yeah, they're kind of outside Blizzard with the uh, with the picket line protesting against their pro treatment. And you know what? Kind of rightfully so, but that's more their general design overall than their talent trees. Their trees are theoretically pretty good, but the talents themselves need a hell of a lot of fixing. So uh, yeah, that'll be looked at. So we have plenty of evidence here that the talents are in fact complicated and varied enough that even the class experts are scratching their head and not for a lack of effort either. Right now, most builds are thrown together based on their blood, sweat, and tears, the, the testers and the theory crafters. But there's something scary in the horizon. The dread beast that all game designers fear. The tool that sucks the fun out of any system. Simulation craft. Dragonflight APLs are not finalized for most specs yet, which does mean we're currently flying blind. But surely, like always, raid bots will come online. It will wake up and everyone will just pick the biggest number. Except maybe not. And if you're, say, uh, from a computer science background, you'll be starting to think about why. And that's because raid bots themselves actually said full talent tree sims may never be supported due to their ridiculously massive size. Yeah. On their support page, they go into detail on in this. Again, this is like a nice little bit of uh, CS 101. Their average size for just a full spec tree sim not touching the class side at all, is about 60 million combinations, which is about 300 billion iterations. This is 18,750 times larger than the largest sim Raidbot can currently handle. Of course, this only matters if you are trying to compare everything. You could, of course, just test DPS with a few fixed builds, but it still makes it miles more complicated and interesting than before. Huh. Those are a lot of big numbers, eh? So here's the conspiracy. The only way to combat cookie cutter builds is to give people so much choice that it becomes a nightmare to decide. Uh, some games deal with the whole illusion of choice thing by removing it and operating on a, just a more simple basis, right? If you can't make choices, then you can't make the wrong choices and that does afford a degree of safety. That was kind of the reality of the old talent system back in MOP. The talents were insanely simple then, and they were actually shared, uh, shared across specs. Instead of completing your spec, these were just some extra toppings for your class. Obviously then with the Legion rework, talents became these things that in a way, finished your spec. We went from building our spec with the talent system only, um, you know, until say Cataclysm, to then adding some sprinkles on top of an already complete spec for Mists of Pandaria, and then a step back towards rebuilding our spec via Talents and Legion. And now, we've kind of come full circle with Dragonflight, except it's even more complicated now. Now, you've got two talent trees, and the game is so much more interwoven with its class design now, with just so many more interactions. 
Well, they've went out of their way to make these trees very large and very interwoven. And that means you just can't really as much rely on the computer to just tell you what to do. Now, the unfortunate news is that we're already theoretically seeing the downsides of this. Uh, some preliminary sims for mages are actually available, and yeah, it does kind of look like they're in the same unbalanced place as always. The difference between the best and worst sim builds is a rather chunky 12%. Now that goes down to 5% for Frost right now, but that still is going to result in the same behavior. Pick the build that does the much damage and never think about it ever again. Even if it's a harder build to play, perhaps you may not do as, as well on, um, that's not represented in the numbers. And if Blizzard can't quickly bring balance, uh, you know, fixes and stuff in between builds, uh, or even just before launch, then a lot of the narrative around talents will of course remain the same, you know? cookie cutter builds from Discord. Swap between them for each boss or dungeon and you're sorted. But there is basically no way to solve that player behavior as is, so what do we do? This all goes back to what Ian Hazakosta said during the interview about Power Infusion. There are two games, make no mistake about this. Game one is the game that the developers are making. Game two is the game that some players are playing. Now, these talent trees are a solid step towards game one, a game designed around, uh, well, just in a way to incentivize people to make their own choices. And some of that has clearly worked because the most uh, changed trees do have plenty of options in which buttons to press. I mean, Fury Warrior has a low APM playstyle based around auto-attacking quickly. Imagine that. Balanced Druids get to have a wild mushroom uh, you know, thing back, and uh, there are some cute additions, like summoning in a fairy dragon. Feral has got a replacement for Blood Talons that lowers the skill ceiling without destroying their damage. Enhancement Shamans get a whole variety of builds. Basically, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can experiment with. If the Biss build does not suit your current playstyle or stat weights perfectly, but only if you don't mind doing a few percent less damage. I mean, theoretically, you could play the non-optimal build better than playing the optimal build and still get better results. Now, if you want to play game two, well, players can always figure out the optimal build and just call it a day. But if you want to play game one, you can. And of course, you, you can always switch at literally any time your talents outside of combat or mythic plus. So with all the information we have right now, the talent trees are, for the most part, a success. It's just a matter for Blizzard to balance the game, fix up some lingering issues across, uh, you know, a bit of them across most of the classes, especially the more left behind specs like Rhett, Shadow, and Guardian, and actually take these talent trees forward into the future because right now we are only at step one of a thousand mile long journey. We've also yet to see if players actually want talent trees like this anyway, or if WoW's been cookie cutter follow the guide as a game for so long, that most players won't even know how to engage with a system like this. Which does lead to a suggestion. So, with pre-patch and the extra talent points you pick up while leveling in Dragonflight, try to play game one. Try to just pick what you think is cool or strong. And be sure to bring your interrupts and defensives to dungeons, please. Also, I forgot, actually leveling from level 10 through 70 with talents actually feels pretty damn interesting. So that means bringing it together for us, yes, the new talent system is a success, just with a few asterisks. That said, Blizzard themselves said that with this talent system representing such a large change to the game overall, they are open to making design changes, not merely tuning, but design changes throughout this expansion. So perhaps you can expect to see it continually improve. So how do you feel about it? Are you going to try to play game one, the thing that Blizzard designed, and actually engage with the talents regularly? Or are you just going to go to the WoWhead guide and call it a day? I'd be pretty damn keen to, to hear what it's like for you. But overall, that is our take on the talents, which really are one of the largest systemic revamps the World of Warcraft has had in a very, very long time indeed. Thank you.